cases reported Friday. That's down 24% this week. But hospitalizations remain at peaks levels. This is Klee, and I wanted to provide an update regarding the situation with COVID that I'm dealing with, myself and my partner. Um, basically, I think it's important to share a bit about like the risks regarding mutual aid and also just like why it's incredibly necessary in the context or in an environment that we're operating in where there's a lot of people who don't give a shit about wearing masks or about any of the COVID protocols at a minimum uh, here in so-called Arizona. And I also wanted to just provide an overview of my experience that it might be helpful or just part of the dialogue and documentation regarding this process. Uh, I first want to acknowledge that, um, you know, there are really serious situations that we continue to face uh, in our communities, especially as indigenous people. We are a high risk category just by being indigenous uh, for mortality regarding COVID. And so um, if we look at the statistics, which I'll put here in the video, um, there are close to 50,000 positive cases that have been documented on Dinepikeya uh, for Diné people. And that's a, out of a population of 250,000 people. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had the highest rates of COVID exposure in the so-called U.S. And so there are a range of factors I wrote um, a uh, piece that I think is still really relevant and I perhaps will just sort of narrate and share some uh, in another video about that because I think it really provides a bit of perspective regarding the uh, environmental factors and the overall factors uh, in addressing colonization and addressing uh, capitalism and those uh, systems of oppression which have continually attacked our lands and our bodies by extension and poisoned our lands. That way we, we might not have the healthy foods and nutrition that we need. That way we might not have the medicines essential uh, for our healing, like the desecration here of the holy San Francisco peaks. Medicine people had uh, testified in court saying that if this mountain is defiled and desecrated with treated sewage effluent. Uh, it is one of the pillars of our cosmology. It's where our deities live. It's where our medicines that we gather. We can't gather other places. It's where we make offerings. If this mountain is defiled, it's desecrated, then there will be great imbalance and disharmony. There will be viruses. There will be um, ecological harm. And so this is something that, you know, our people have uh, already cautioned and warned about the consequences for war against Mother Earth and not just with the imbalance with our our bodies on this level, but also, also with the climate um, as well. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that piece sort of gets into that harm that has been done because it is not a cliche of what we do to the land, we do to our bodies, and this is really part of it. Um, I'll also share a bit of perspective regarding my experience, because um, as many of you know now that I'm immunocompromised, uh, also taking minimal immunosuppressants, and I'm unvaccinated. And so I'll talk about that, and um, not in terms of, you know, anti-vaccine, because uh, fascist conspiracy theorist bullshit is one thing, but um, in terms of traditional medicines and approaches and understandings of the herbs and the conflicts that we've had with allopathic or Western medicine. Um, so just to provide a little bit of um, timeline, um, on about Tuesday evening, I started feeling a sore throat, just really minimal, nothing. Next day I woke up and I had a pretty serious throat, sore throat, just impacting my speech, but nothing really harsh. Um, and I had a little bit of sniffles that sort of started progressing throughout the day. All right, Yate, um, this is Klee, and I'm wearing a mask inside because I just had at home COVID tests, two of them show positive, so bad news, but my symptoms are not that severe. I have a sore throat, it actually started about a little over two days ago, and um, a little sniffles, but other than that, no fever, no other symptoms. I can smell and taste. Everything else just fine, so I'm going to get a uh, PCR test tomorrow 
just to verify the results. So uh, yeah, interesting experience. Uh, sorry for the noise in the background. So I'm making another prototype, uh, a couple of updates, but also um, there are two out there in the wild that are being play tested actually on opposite coasts of Turtle Island. And uh, I need one because I'm gonna be play testing again. Uh, I gotta feel better first because this just came. Uh, and uh, I really can't tell where I would have gotten it. I'm extremely, extremely cautious, always wearing a KN95 mask, double mask actually, no matter where I go. Um, and constantly to the point of almost performative hygiene, making sure that I sanitize everything. But I did run a lot of errands and I was doing mutual aid with unsheltered relatives. And there's always a risk for exposure. Um, on those levels, especially considering how um, intensely uh, infective uh, the recent strains are regarding COVID. So yeah, I feel fine. I, I know a lot of folks have already gone through this and um, you know, I've been prepared. Uh, we have our own home quarantine kit, which I'll show you all sometime to see how over-prepared I am. <laughs> Just taking it in stride um, as well. And, relying on traditional medicines. Um, this is my way and this is the way that I was taught and continue to live my life. So I'm just moving forward and uh, wanted to provide that little update while I'm making my game. So it's not slowing me down yet. I don't have a fever. I don't have any of those other symptoms. So this is my little short vlog update number one and I will see you again in Maybe I'll be feeling better, maybe I won't, so. Um, but as you can see, all the gear that we have in here fits. Um, and there's a few other things that we have that aren't out, like this um, oximeter at home COVID tests and more KN95 masks. Um, so here's the list. We have paper towels, bleach, Clorox wipes, nitro gloves, oh, that's on the same list. Uh, heavy duty gloves, Tyvek suits, garbage bags, plastic sheeting to create a quarantine, like if we need to separate space between um, rooms, and that's basically just like the stuff you use for painting. Blue tape to tape that up, sanitizers, uh, rubbing alcohol, Theraflu, which is just, you know, in case somebody needs some immediate relief. Uh, rapid test kits, um, we've gone through two of them so we just have this one left and then n95 mask uh, my partner took the test but the results actually didn't come back um, it was a, maybe a faulty test so we scheduled appointments for the pcr tests um, the next day at the local university and so we were able to get those appointments and figured that it would give us more clarity i also had um scheduled a, a test at the Sacred Peaks, the local Indian Health Service clinic. And so uh, that was actually the first one that came up in the morning. They get, they had an opening. So I went there and I had an interesting discussion with the doctor. Hey, gotcha. I have an appointment for a COVID test. Okay, go inside. Yeah. So you see that's going to blow up all the end. It's on the south side. Yeah. So I'll take the intro and then she'll call you. Okay. Um, I do want to say that the um, is it important to note, like through this whole process, especially doing mutual aid uh, and putting myself at risk and recognizing the range of issues of exposure that uh, I was diagnosed with, uh, um, or I was diagnosed as being immunocompromised with an autoimmune disease. So here's the thing. So that I double mask, I wear a KN95, I'm cloth mask on top of that, I do a constant sanitizing regimen and any interactions and physical distancing. The problem is, is that here in so-called Arizona, uh, people don't care, they don't give a shit. Folks are more concerned about perceived violations of their rights, so they refuse to wear masks, they refuse to socially distance, they don't give a fuck about people who actually might be more susceptible to virus. Yeah, that's part of the reason I want to document the process. Hopefully it gives some idea, insight, and uh, some perspective. I know a lot of folks have 
faced worse. My symptoms are not bad at all right now. So just figured I can provide some insight. So interesting appointment uh, that I had scheduled for testing because I wanted to have a verification. And um, they, the doctor here said that at-home tests are uh, reliable enough to determine that I would have a positive result. The uh, false negatives are the ones that they're concerned with and, and that shows up a lot, but not a lot of false positives. So they said that they're treating it as a positive COVID case, uh, especially since I took two of them and they were both positive and they didn't need further testing here for verification. So now I, uh, yeah, I, I actually have another test scheduled. So it'll be interesting to compare the process and responses. They did offer, because I am immunocompromised and unvaccinated, they did offer um, trial uh, treatments for um, some medication. One is intravenous and the other one is um, a pill. But yeah, more updates to come.